Hello, my name is Kerryarth, and today we're going to do something a little bit different, to be honest. So, I want to paint... Oh, good start. I want to, <laughs> I want to paint this lass. Uh, a Mermorn... Mermorn? Mermorn? Mermorn Banshee. However you want to pronounce it. Uh, M-Y-R-M-O-U-R-N. One of these. Now, before we get started, this video is sponsored by Artist Opus. A massive thank you to them for sponsoring this video. If you are interested in Artist Opus or any of their products, then you can find a link in the description. Now, I know roughly how I want to paint this, but I'm not 100% sure how to actually achieve what I want to do, which is why this is going to be a bit different. I'm aware, by the way, that not quite fully base coated some of it, but it doesn't really matter, to be to be honest, uh, the way we're going to be painting this. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so, yeah, what I want is a muted palette. I would quite like uh, kind of uh, various sort of dull tones. I guess more sort of grim dark than than fully detailed. So rather than going like completely spectral, I want like quite a quite a soiled grubby look, if that's the way to put it. Um, so yeah, I've got I've got various uh, various sort of bone and flesh tones here. Um, uh, I've also got the, the trusty ice yellow, and I've got some scale colour uh, white there. So, yeah, we're just going to see how this goes. Uh, as I said, I'm not too fussed about that not being completely covered, because we're going to cover that with something else anyway. In fact, we'll start with that. So, we're going to do a, uh, a base, a sort of very patchy base of the uh, Karak stone first. Uh, let me just grab a, another brush so I can actually get the paint out. Which poor brush do I want to uh, not care about today? Um, <laughs> let's go for you. You'll do. So, I'm going to be doing this using the uh, the Series D brushes again because I love painting with them. That's it. <laughs> that's, that's the entirety. That's the whole reason. Uh, oh Lord, that needs another proper shake, doesn't it? Cool. That was absolutely uh, shockingly thick. Let's see if that's any better. Oh, tiny bit. Okay, so I'm going to get a nice a thick scoop of that onto there, just like that. God, that brush is already knackered. Look at that. Terrible. I think that was one of my uh, my like two pound brushes off Amazon. So gonna get a bit a bit of moist on there. Okay. Right. I'm just gonna get a little bit. Just a little bit on the uh, on the brush there, and let's go. Let's just. Get a very rough covering of this. I'm just stippling it on gently. Could have done with a bit more. There we go. Yeah, just going to stipple it on nice and... I say gently. I'm not doing it gently at all. I'm doing it pretty rough, to be fair. There's a decent coat of black on that side, so... Okay, there we go. Just... Just give it a real good poke. Try not to shake the camera. So yeah, this is uh, this uh, this mermorn um, is actually going to be used in D and D as opposed to as opposed to being like a, a full on Age of Sigma army thing. Um, it's uh, it's for something that the party will encounter, <laughs> and they'll have a great time fighting it. Uh, there's going to be four of them. And it's part of a kind of a fairly disturbing but thematic uh, sort of invasion from another plane kind of thing. This isn't going to be the worst thing they fight. It's just going to be one of the things that they fight. <laughs> this, there's a fair amount of nonsense that's going to go on. I'm really looking forward to it, to be fair. So, yeah, I've got, like, I've got four of these to paint before Monday. I mean, this is going out on... This is going to go out on Sunday, so there's a there's a chance that what I'm aiming for may not come to pass, but we'll see. Okay, there we go. So, as I, as I said before, like the fact that it's not it didn't have a a full proper base coat, I was only very quickly sprayed with uh, very quickly sprayed with black because it's 
the bottom section at least was always going to be covered in something a bit a bit darker something a bit like like this kind of uh what paint actually is this so yeah we're starting off with the carrack stone and it's it's all about just trying to get it kind of dull grubby muted tones I really don't know how else to put it. I don't know if I'm describing this very well at all or whether you're going to be sitting there going, dude, what are you talking about? I mean, you may do that on a regular basis anyway. So yeah, I'm just stippling rather than dry brushing right now. My technique has improved slightly <laughs> since uh, since Byron from Artis Opus came and gave uh, like proper hands-on demo of the brushes, which I was super... I was super pleased with that. You'll have seen the uh, the second video of that series yesterday, hopefully, provided you uh, you know have have watched them, which you should because they're really interesting. They're really good. Byron really knows what he's talking about, and you can get a much better idea as to uh, as to how the technique works from from him than me, because uh, as I say in the uh, in those videos, I am but a a. But a novice in this uh, this new this new world, so to speak, um, and he is not a novice. He knows exactly what he's doing, and boy, does it show when he's talking about it. Okay, so get that down there. It doesn't matter if it's rough. I'm kind of hoping to get it not even. <laughs> That's what I'm kind of going for. I mean, I'd say I'm definitely achieving. Definitely achieving not even. It's not often you want like properly uneven, but sometimes you get a decent, get a nice effect out of it. So what I'm thinking, what I'm going for is kind of like a bit darker down the bottom. So we've got about all the way, we've got up to there on that side. We'll get up to about the same on the, on the back and then move to a slightly lighter colour and then I'm going to try and bring it all together eventually uh, there's a lot of like try and maybe and hesitation from this but you know the, the only way you're going to find out if something works is if you do it right and I'm going to label this isn't like a tutorial I'm gonna label this as uh, like the video is gonna be like the more the Mermorn Banshee experiment because uh, <laughs> if it doesn't work, then it can go up as a cautionary tale. Don't paint your banshees like this because they'll look terrible. Is what is what I'll call it. Yeah, actually, if it's if it's the uh, the Mermorn Banshee experiment, then you know that it's that it's kind of worked reasonably well. Then if the video of the title is "Do not paint your banshees this way," then you'll know just from the title that I've gone cocked it up. <laughs> But I'm really hoping that I don't do that. Because, oh boy, I need these ready for Monday. I need four of the sods ready for Monday. So, we'll have to... We'll just have to hope and pray. There we go. There's just a little bit that it's not taking right there. Okay. Let's, come on. Why don't you want to take just there? There's just like a specific tiny bit... That is not having it. There we go. Right, got it. And just go down the back there. I was going to leave her off the base to do this, but trying to paint these off the base is a real, real pain in the ass because they're so they're super fiddly models. These I do love them. Don't get me wrong, I do like them, but they they are real, real fiddly and thin and. It creates a great looking model, but it make, does not make them easy to paint at all. Okay, let me just get that scrap. Just get a little bit more and just get that last bit there. Get it right up in there. Try and get that little bit there without damaging it. Okay, just... Oh, oh, there we go. And I'll just get that bit there like that. Uh, 
Okay, so that's got that up there. So I'm going to clean the brush off. And by clean the brush off, I mean... There we go. Need a touch more water in there. Now, if this works, this could be a super quick way of doing this. It could be great, because it could mean I could slam out four of them in, like, a couple of hours, if, if that... If it goes horribly wrong, then it means I'm going to have to strip them back and start all over again. Actually, I won't need to strip them back, because this technique is super forgiving. You're hardly putting any paint on the model, so it doesn't matter if you go a bit overboard. Uh, that brush is actually too knackered, even for that. Let me get... Uh, so many old knackered brushes. So many to choose from. Okay, so I'm going to go up to Ashbati Bone. So I think... No, I'm not. I'm going to go on to uh, Flayed One Flesh first. Okay, give that a good shake. Bit of ASMR there, bit of paint-based ASMR. Okay, get a nice solid blob. There we go. I will give that a quick, uh, a quick wipe because that can now be the official transporting brush. I was cheating before. I was being naughty. I was using the dry brushes to transport the paint. And uh, I got I got told off. I got told off on video. Which is fair. Because like, you shouldn't do that. I was just being super lazy. Come on, just a tiny bit more in there. So uh, today's music choice is a bit weird. Because uh, it's not music. It's um, Achievement Haunter. Sorry, just just Haunter now. I don't believe in ghosts or anything like that, but it's very entertaining. There we go, so now I've got a slightly lighter one, and I'm just going to tab that up there. Okay, I need to get some nice solid black patches on this uh, on this texture palette so that I've got a better idea as to what the colour is going to look like when I get it on there. Okay, that's that's working. That's working. Coverage is a uh, coverage is not great with this flayed one flesh to be honest, but that's okay because we can do a couple of layers. But that's actually. That's working okay. So, something that I'm planning on doing, and it'll be interesting to see whether this works, is a bit of typhus corrosion here and there. So, I'm kind of planning on having this sort of palette across the whole model. But what I want to do is get some typhus corrosion. I'm actually dry brushing the edges here just because it's getting on a bit better. Um, so, yeah, I'm planning on getting a bit of typhus corrosion at the very base of the kind of cloak arrangement they've got going on. When I say a bit of typhus erosion, I'm probably going to do quite a lot. But I want to try and... <laughs> I'm not going to be able to dry brush it on. That would be mental. You can't dry brush typhus corrosion. Unless you know more than I do, in which case maybe you can. But it seems unlikely that I'd be able to manage that. But I want to get a nice, decent effect down the bottom of just being really mucky and dirty. Now, I'm avoiding that because that's not going to be... It's going to be sort of similar colour palette, kind of, but it's not going to be anywhere near the uh, the rest of it. Okay, so I'm just going down the back of the cloak, going all the way down, because there's still a bit of a gradient there. It's not as pronounced, but there's still a bit of a gradient. So, okay, let me just get, just get up in there. Might have to switch to a smaller brush to get all the way into the corner, but if we need to, then we do. It's fine. Get the very head. Go, go across there like that. I'm going to give it another go over with another, another colour a bit later anyway. 
Okay. You know what? I'm actually liking that. I mean, it's super quick and super easy, and it's not particularly, you know, it's not massively complex, but I kind of like the way that's coming out. That's the kind of colour palette that I was going for, and it's the kind of general... Oh, oh don't roll all into it. No! Yeah, did the thing. Rolled it all over the paint. Don't do that. That's just that's just clumsy. It's just plain old clumsy. Okay, so we've done the the uh, the flayed one flesh, and now we're going to go up to the Ushbati bone, which I don't think I've got an open one of these already anywhere. <laughs> I don't think I have. I might have. A bit late now anyway, because it's already open. So, gonna get another streak of that on the uh, on the old palette here. Get a nice solid, nice solid blob, and I'll put that up there. There we go. Just get some of that off, and then I'll give it a quick clean. What I'm thinking is I can always go back to the character stone at the bottom of the uh, at the bottom of the cloak if I want to. That'd be fine. That would work well enough. Get some of that. Just get rid of any excess paint on there. How's that feeling? That feels pretty good. Okay, that's essentially how you're cleaning these as you go. You just brush on the texture palette and it gets rid of any excess paint that's on there and if you've got multiple models so you feel like doing a bit of highlighting on another model then you can always get rid of excess paint on a different model entirely if you want okay give me a dark section there we go that'll do so now i'm gonna go Just gonna stipple the top with that. Give it a kind of Oh no, that's way too much. I skipped a step. Oh goofed it. Right, there we go. Just wipe that off with your hand, that's fine. Get off with the finger. There we go. And now we can that's better. Oh, there we go. Still a line down the back of the head. I green stuff the hell out of this model because that annoyed me. And then I... Uh, it just hasn't quite got rid of it the way I was hoping. Okay, let's just get a bit, bit more on the end there. Let's get that little spot there. Can we do something about that? Yeah, it's fading. Okay, yeah, all right, that's working out okay. That's working out okay. Got a kind of nice mix of colours going on there. I think I'm going to get a bit of the... Let's get a bit of... Let's mix a bit of the Flesh Terror. Get a bit of that there. Get a bit of that. And then... There we go, that's nice. That'll do. Right, let's, uh, let's give that... A, a dab down the bottom. There we go. There we go, that's looking nice. I suppose it's like a... I'm trying to think of the best way to put the kind of look that I sort of am trying to get. I mean, I'm happy with what I'm getting. But it's trying to work out the best way to describe it, I guess. It's like... I guess it's like... The sheets that they cover bodies with. I don't know what the name for it is. Like like a kind of death shroud look. So something that's... But like an old death shroud. One that's been... Um, one that's been on the body for ages and has kind of slowly rotted away. And has just ended up... Oh, really kind of... Dull and grubby... I think that's the only way to describe it. I don't know if I'm even describing it well, but it's it's what I'm it's what I'm aiming for, and uh, it seems to be what I'm getting pretty much. 
I am pretty much getting what I'm asking for. Go get a bit more. Uh, there we go. Okay, so I've got that kind of nice dull brown kind of brown kind of look, which is. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much what I'm after. I know it's not all, like, I know some of it is supposed to be, like, spectral energy, but I, I don't want it to... That's not what I'm after, so... <laughs> Just added a little bit of the uh, Vishpati bone into it there. There we go. Yeah, that's... That's coming out pretty nice. Okay. So, having got that far, what I want to do is get something a bit paler for the actual, uh, for the actual, like, corset. And when I say a bit paler, I mean a lot paler. I'm just going to go for some white for the corset. And uh, I'm just going to very lightly dry brush it on using the super small brush. Uh, I think that's pretty much all of that off there. Still got a bit of blue from ages ago, but that's that's pretty clean now. Okay, had a slight technical issue there. <laughs> Camera ran out of space, not helpful. But uh, yeah, so I was getting a bit of white on the coarser area there. I think most of it was caught, but just in case it wasn't. Um, yeah, I, I've got some, successfully got some white on the detail there. I'm just trying to pick these bits out without going too overboard. Um, so I'm just going over it very carefully. There we go, and I think I'm going to try and get a bit on the hands too, so there's hardly any paint on this brush. I just want to pick out the uh, the very edges of the fingers, which, yeah, that's gone okay. Just pick up a tiny bit more, just very, very carefully, and I want to get the very edge of that jaw as well. In fact, I want to get the underside too, so I'm just going to get a tiny bit more white. There we go. So just going to go along the very edge, like that. And get there too. And I'm going to go right over the eyes and the nose. Like that. Okay. In fact, I'm going to go over the eyes again, so I think probably I'll put a little dot of something in the eyes to properly uh, properly bring it out. So the other hand as well, I'm just going to go over, just pick out kind of the edge of the fingers. There we go. Okay. okay. Just get a bit more. Right across the very edge of the hand. And I'm going to go down on the dagger. There we go. Okay, so. I want to get a bit more white up the very top there. So I'll just give this brush a little clean. Yeah, there we go, that's fine. I'm going to go down another step, so I'm going to go onto the uh, onto the small, and I'm just going to... That needs a tiny bit more. Give it that. Give that a poke. Tiny... Tiny bit. Okay. And... Then I'm just going to go over the very top. Gonna go side to side. It's picking out a little bit, just a tiny bit. And finally, for the top, I'm gonna to get a little bit of ice yellow because ice yellow is a really nice. It's a really nice color. So, same brush again. I'm not gonna bother cleaning it first. 
going to give it a little dab. Get just a t tiny amount. Okay, that's most of it off. And then just going to go over the very edges. A little bit more actually there we go and I'm just gonna go side to side just try and catch the very edges yeah that's making it a lot that's making it a lot brighter isn't it the very edges there okay so I think I'm gonna go all the way down with this actually and I'm just gonna very very gently just going across the whole thing it's not doing a huge amount now let's there we go just go very edges especially up near the top there okay so that's brought that out a bit and I'll do the same thing here There we go, and then we'll go along that side as well. Really like hammering at the edges. And then down there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, this is where there's a risk of mangling it totally, but uh, okay, so. That'll do. That's a totally knackered brush. Look at the head of that. Totally, totally, totally garbage. Okay. I'm going to get some Typhus Corrosion. Now, I'm not going to put any Typhus Corrosion on this uh, texture palette because that could wreck it. I don't want to wreck it. And I'm uh, going to get a decent amount on the brush there like that. As you can see, it's, it's, already, it's already totally wrecked this brush. I've got some kitchen towel here get rid of a lot of it on there and then at the very bottom at the base I just want to kind of roughly just poke it on almost stipple it on but with this knackered old brush and get a decent distance up that's, oh, that's, that's actually working. Okay, get a bit more off there. And uh, same again. Same again. Okay. Okay, and then we're going to do it again up here. Yeah, that's worked really nicely on the back of it, so... I'm going to keep going on the on the front. Just going to keep keep it up. Keep it up going up there. Just a little bit more again. I'm so I'm so not used to using typhus corrosion like this. <laughs> it's like it's almost like a being used as like a sort of dry brushy highlight colour in it and of itself here, which I think not surprise me better than I thought. Okay, so get rid of uh, the vast majority of what's on the brush again. And I'm just gonna lightly lightly poke and poke and jab. There we go, and I'll go over this again, just just light poking and jabbing, like that. Just get a little bit further up, just so it blends a little bit more, but it's not really blending, it's just like... Okay, 
Okay. And that is actually, I think, pretty much what I was going for. I might do one last pass of, uh, of Ice Yellow at the very top, just to really bring out the edges. But honestly, that's pretty much what I was after. So I'm super chuffed with that. Super simple, obviously. Super simple and... You know, obviously it won't be to everyone's taste, but for but for what I but for what I have in my head and for what I was after I'm 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 pretty happy with this. So just on the very edges again. I think I might do a little bit of do it a bit more a bit more standard. Okay, so that's not not normal, not standard, uh, not standard night haunt colours, but and in fact that probably doesn't even count as three co <laughs> three colours, does it? But I'm pretty happy with that. I wanted something understated. I wanted something grubby. I wanted something that was not not typical, and I feel like that has achieved that. Now I'm gonna. I'm going to take a bit of a gamble here, a bit of a risk, and I'm just going to get a bit more ice yellow. And I'm going to just go along the very edges where I've put the... Uh, where I've put the Typhus Corrosion. Yeah. Okay, this is working out pretty well. Just get it on the very edge. Just there we go. Okay. There we, yeah. Right. Obviously, still got the base to do, but for I don't know what half an hour of not knowing what I was doing and just faffing about, I'll take that. That'll do. I need to blot out the uh, blot out the eyes with a bit of black, but uh, and maybe cover that bit of a bit of lead belcher or something. But apart from that, I'm super chuffed with that. I think that'll do. So yeah, that was the uh, the Mermorn Mermorn Banshee experiment. I wanted to create something that was a bit darker, a bit more like I, I don't know. I don't really know what you call this this kind of color palette. Something more subdued, more grubby, less glowy. Uh, yeah, just something a bit different for these guys instead of the kind of glowy, kind of bluey green stuff that we usually see for them. And yeah, I'm happy with these. I've got three more to do, and I think I can achieve three more. And now that I know what I'm doing, a lot less time actually. In fairness, a lot of that was experimentation. So I reckon probably I could finish the. I could do the other three in an hour. So yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I've no idea if that was helpful or not. Let me know what you think of the scheme in the comments down below. Bit too simplistic, or then again, it's not really used for Age of Sigma necessarily. It's just D&D &D at the moment, but too simplistic or quite nice and different. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, you can see how I did that. If you're interested in the brushes that I use, then of course those are, there'll be links to those in the description down below. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.